Hello everyone! In this video, I want to explain how to set up a process for expired domain search using our tools Netpeak Spider and Netpeak Check. Step by step, we'll go through each stage to find drop domains. At the end, I will share a spreadsheet with available domains that I have found. Also, all of them have backlinks from trusty websites. So, you better take a cup of your favorite drink, close your Facebook, so nothing can distract you from being first at catching these domains. What do you need to do the same on your side? This is my starter pack. First of all, Netpeak Spider and Netpeak Checker Pro subscriptions. Then any laptop with 16GB RAM. For example, I use MacBook Pro running Bootcamp with Windows. And sparkling eyes. That was enough for me to find more than 500 available domains. But most of them are low-quality ones, but if you're looking not for backlinks but for content, maybe some of them will fit your needs. My workflow was pretty simple. I need to crawl as many pages of trusty websites as I can, then export all the external links and find available domains among of them. I call this way cheap but works, so let's talk about it in more detail. At the first step, we need to choose which websites will crawl. In order to do so, I used ratings of SimilarWeb and Ahrefs. The only thing I need here is to manually check each of the domains I'm interested in, either they are crawlable. I mean, sometimes after several requests, they will respond with capture solving uh, page, so it probably will block you from crawling them. I used the following workflow to check all of them. Adding to Netpeak Spider, crawling and checking status code parameter, and also for all of them I used our tool source code and HTTP header analysis, for example www.ink.com, and check if I can find any useful content in server response. I just open Extracted Text tab and see if it responded well. Because sometimes it will respond with 200 OK status code, but it will lead you to capture solving page. So I choose 23 domains that I will crawl today. And let me explain how to better um, configure the tool so you can save your time. After adding a list of domains to the tool, let's configure the crawling properly. In order to do so, we will use two elements. There are settings and parameters. Let's start with settings first. Open the general tab and enable multi-domain crawling. This feature allows you to crawl a lot of domains at once and get all the data into one report. This feature is available for all Pro Plan users, but if you have standard version, don't worry, you still can you still can find drop domains, but you will need to crawl each domain separately and then merge all the reports by yourself. It takes much more time, but so I, I advise you to upgrade to Pro Plan. And if you think that it's not worth it to do so, I invite you to visit our demo where my colleague will show you all the advantages of our tools and also advantages of Pro Plan. You can book it following the link in the video description. And the che second checkbox we need to turn on is crawling of all subdomains. It actually means that we will not only crawl the subdomains, but consider them as internal links. So when we'll find external links on them, we will we'll include only these links to the external links reports. So it will just save some space and reduce the number of exported rows when we, when we will click on export the external links report. And then go to the advanced tab, click on consider all the crawling in there and indexing instructions. You can only forget about refresh because it's not so popular and I almost never met that. In it will help us to reduce the number of pages that are actually uh, not passing the link weight or they are just blocked and search robots will never find them uh, and, we will, and we want to find only 
drop domains that has links from indexed and or indexable pages. So better to find the best of them. So just consider all of the crawling instructions to exclude blocked, no indexed, no followed pages. And if you want to be 100% sure that crawling will go in the way that you want it to go and no crashes will happen, will happen, uh, try reducing the number of crawled URLs at once. I mean, uh, try to set 100 URLs uh, as maximum number of crawling URLs, so the program will stop at this point. And if you have enough RAM available, increase this number, for example, up to 1 million pages. And if your RAM is still free, increase the number until the RAM is filled up. For example, on my 16 gigabytes RAM MacBook, uh, I could crawl what, two and a half millions of URLs. So I think I was pretty much close to three millions, but it's better to take it step by step because uh, if you spend a lot of time doing something, uh, I'm 100% sure you don't want to lose it. Even though we have a feature that will help you to uh, save all the results during the crawling uh, because every five minutes we will save the project so even if electricity turned off or your computer just throwing a tantrum on you or something like that we will auto save your project and it will be opened automatically whenever you open the tool again but still it's um, it's not the best way to do so. So when I was doing this project, I was using like auto stops at 500 URLs, 500 thousands URLs, then 1 million URLs, and then 2 million URLs, and then 2.5 million URLs. So it's just the best way to do so. And that's pretty much it about all the settings. And let's go to the parameters. We will actually need only two of them, status code, uh, in order to then segment all of the unnecessary URLs. I mean, we will configure a segment that will include only pages that responded with 200 OK status code. So we will reduce the number of exported rows at the end. And also external links. When you click on external links, also outgoing links, will be enabled. We actually don't need them, but it's just uh, an, arch an architecture of our tool. So uh, external links, status code and outgoing links will be turned on automatically. And after that, we can click on start and wait till the crawling will be finished. Crawling more than a million URLs may take some time, which you can spend reading posts on our blog or exploring our YouTube channel. And if you like it, I would be happy to see you clicking the like button and subscribing to our channel. As soon as crawling is finished, I highly recommend you to manually save the project, so you're 100% sure that no data will be lost. After that, go to the settings, export tab, and choose XL6 format as an export option. It will help us to divide all the exports into 1 million raw files and they are just easier to process further. Click on OK, go to the export menu, extra large reports, external links. Choose any destination that is more suitable for you and this export process may take a lot of time again because probably it's more than 50 million external links and as far as you can understand it just it just takes time so uh, i will come back as soon as it's done after exporting i got 53 documents that i need to process all of them looks like a regular export links report inside of the tool so you get from url link type url anchor text alt rel attributes and url source view so how you can see it in the source code and we have 53 documents containing million urls each 
million rows each that we need to process. And let me explain how you can actually do that. There are two ways how you can extract NAS3 data. First of them is to code your own script uh, in order to extract only corresponding column that contains external links. But you either need to know how to code or hire a remote developer or take time of your colleague. So I will choose a second option that is easier but takes more time. And the second option is to do it manually. This way doesn't require any coding skills, help of your developers or colleagues, no extra charges, but takes more time and patience. So let me give you more details how to do it. Here is the simple workflow that you should repeat in order to carry out this task manually. First of all, open a pick checker and add URLs from reports that you have exported from the pick spider. I prefer choosing five at once, and click on open, and after that, program may go to not responding status. But don't worry, in 10 or 15 or 20 minutes, it will come back to normal. Just give it some time to process all this data. After that, go to the URL Explorer tab and apply filter that will exclude URLs matching regular expression, where you will list all the domains that you already know about, like youtube.com, foxnews.com, guardian, bbc.co.uk, and many more. I will list this regular expression in the article on our blog. Click on OK, and during the applying the segment, program may go to not responding status again, but the same as before, just give it some time. After a filter will be applied, export this table on your computer to the separate folder. In my case, it was 16 times when I had to repeat this circle to process all the URLs from Big Spider reports, and they are much smaller than previous ones, so we can select all of them and open in Big Checker at once. And uh, it will exclude all the duplicates, so we are ready for the next stage and check their availability for purchase. So, let me show you how to do that. At this point, when we want to check purchase availability of million of domains, we may face one problem, that doing it manually in Namecheap or GoDaddy may take several years. But here is the way how to automate and simplify this process. When we open all the filtered results in a peak checker, enable IP parameter in DNS group on the sidebar. Then go to the settings, general tab, set maximum number of simultaneous threads. I used 200, but if you want, you can choose like 50 or 15. Uh, it doesn't matter, only if your computer will manage it, then go straight to the maximum number. Then click on OK and click on Start. It will help us to find all the domains with the empty IP parameter, because it's one of the signs that shows us that this domain may be dropped. And at the end, I got like 30,000 of domains with, without any IP address, and we can move to the second step. Now we are ready to check purchase availability using data from Huiz. So enable creation date, expiration date, availability, and root domain parameters in Huiz group. And also I recommend using host parameter in website traffic group. Yeah, it's available only for pro plan users, but it will help us to filter unnecessary results quicker when we export it to the spreadsheets. So, uh, as soon as all the parameters enabled, click on Start button and all the data will appear in the table. Yes, it takes some time to finish this check because uh, retrieving data from Hui's service is not that fast. 
and sometimes you will face limits from the service because it's mm, for different databases it has different limitations for example for netherlands or poland or a list of other countries you may face limitations after 10 requests but for most of them it will be fine even if you check thousand of domains at once as soon as this check will be ready i'll come back to you and explain what should we do next as soon as netpeak checker will finish collecting the results i recommend you to do the following things first of all exclude all hosts from dot education dot government dot military dot xxx dot china domain zones because it's not that easy to recover these drop domains. That's the reason why I advised you to enable host parameter in website traffic group. After that, double check if domains that have been shown as available for purchase are really available. In order to do so, you can either do a manual search using domain services like GoDaddy or Namecheap or use their APIs. And at the end, let me show you my results. I have found several thousands of drop domains, but it was so much trash there that to clean this list at least a little bit, I had to reduce their number to a little bit more than 500. So I list all of them in the spreadsheet and also added several metrics from using Netpeak Checker from Ahrefs, using from ACMrush, Alexa, and some data about website traffic. I will share this list with you in video details and also on our blog post. So you can take all of them if you find them interesting for your needs, for your tasks, and you probably would want backlink from it or just to get some content from there. That's pretty much it about the whole process. I understand that at first it takes a lot of time. It's a lot of monkey job there because you have to repeat the same workflow several times and it's boring. Uh, and I know that it's a lot of ways how you can automate this process. And let me give you some of them in the next section, if you are still with me here. First of all, you can skip crawling websites on your computer using Netpeak Spy, but it will cost you some dollars. Because you can use data from Ahref, Serpstat, SEMrush, etc. to export all the links from Nest3 websites. Cloud services have already crawled a lot of websites, and you don't need to do it on your computer, but you will need to pay for that. After that, you can code your own script to check IP addresses of these domains and not doing it in a big check. Also, you can add to this script who is check that will rotate proxies. You will face last limitations. You will speed up the check. And again, you will avoid using a big check. And at the end, you can also connect APIs of different domain services like GoDaddy, Namecheap, etc. to double check availability of those domains that are available based on who is data. That would be the ideal solution for domain search, but it takes a lot of expertise, a lot of time, a lot of money and other resources. So it's up on you to consider either it's worth money or not. That's pretty much it about searching of drop domains. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in comments below or during our online demonstration that you can book following the link in the video description. My colleagues will show you the functionality of our tools and answer all your questions personally. And of course, if you enjoyed this video, I would be happy to see you clicking the like button and subscribing to our channel. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye-bye. I'm glad to see you still watching this video, so I have another tip for you. Do you remember we enabled expiration date parameter in Whois group? It was done with a little purpose. 
you can create your own domain base and sort it by this parameter. Thus, every month or more regularly, you can double check if domain owners prolonged the domain registration or not. Thus, you can regularly get fresh drop domains. That's it for today. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye-bye.